welcome back. And I want to welcome two people from one of my favorite places, the Upcountry History Museum and Furman University, and they're tied together in downtown Greenville. And if you haven't been, you've missed a real treat. And I want to introduce quickly now LaVon Jones, who Hi. is the education coordinator. That's correct. And of course, next to her is someone uh, is pretty famous, I think, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Courtney Tollison Hartness. Thank you for having us. And she, of course, is a history professor at Furman University. And that museum is like a gift to the upstate. Well, we they think have so. programs Thank you. for mm -hmm. children, for all kinds of events going on, but you're here to talk about one specific thing that is going on until June 15th. Yes, yes. we're yes. so excited about our new civil rights exhibit opened this past January and will be open uh, to the public until mid-June. So we hope and you it, all come out and visit. It's called Civil Rights. It's called Protest, Prayers, and Progress. Protest, Greenville's, Prayers, and Progress, that's yes. it. Greenville yes. Civil Rights okay. Movement. And we do have some pictures which you were nice enough to bring that we can show people as we talk. They can show a little bit. And this this is what happened here? Yes, it's an exclusive mm -hmm. focus on what happened here with some context of what happened regionally and, and yeah. nationally as well. But the, the focus is on the Greenville movement. A lot of times people, even people who lived here during this time period, aren't aware of what happened here and, and of how Greenvillians became incredibly involved in enacting change and progress to make Greenville a better place for all, all Greenvillians. Yeah. And so the exhibit talks about what went on in the 1950s, what went on with the school integration, what went on with lunch counters, what went on at the airport, um, swimming pools, on and on and on, and how change was implemented here. And it, ta it takes time. Change takes time. It does indeed. And we have arrived at a much better place. Yes, it, the exhibit actually chronologically starts right after the Civil War when some of the the legislative uh, foundations of change were implemented in the, in the post-Civil War period. And then it jumps up to World War II because that experience of serving in World War II for many people who later became involved in the movement, that was a critical experience, fighting overseas for, for human mm -hmm. rights and beginning to ask oneself, what about my human rights in, in my country, the country I'm fighting for? So uh, it, we come back and then we pick up with World War II, 1950s, 1960s, and into the 70s. And this is open? Through the, the middle public. of June. To, to, yeah. uh, yes, at the Upcountry and, History And is there Museum. something there for all, I mean, if people come as a family? Absolutely, there are activities specifically for children. It's an exhibit that will appeal to all age groups because so many of the activists were from Sterling High School and were, yes. were teenagers at this point in time. But we also have stories of children, Elaine Wittenberg, for instance, who's an elementary age school child who is desegregating Greenville County Schools in 1964. So whether you're five or six or seven years old or whether you're 75 or 76 or 77 years old, there's, there's something, something in this that will appeal to you. Yeah, yeah. And you, um, Levon, you, you have a lot to do with not just this exhibit, but mm -hmm. all the things, because there are other things there besides. This is one event. Right. Yes, that's correct. But there's that's something correct. there all the time. And um, it, it is a bargain, I think. It, oh, uh, definitely. For a family, you can get a membership. You can get a membership, and that membership affords you, and you probably can help me uh, speak to this, but it affords you not just coming to see the exhibit, but you can also be on a special event type calendar. We have um, what's called uh, winter events to where once a month families can come in and they'll have like activities for, for the young and for the old in addition to Lunchbox Learning and History After, After Dark series. And it's very reasonable. There are discounts in the, uh, the gift shop there where there's lots of uh, mm -hmm. upcountry books and, and toys yeah. for children that are that are regionally themed and things like that. But as and you get access to special member preview events. Uh, we had one in January, for instance, for for this exhibit, a member preview party, and we do that uh, practically with all of our exhibits. So it's a great place to bring families and to learn about oh, yeah. the history. So of now our you region. can buy a a single membership, or you can buy a family membership. 
Yes, ma'am. And you can go as many times as you want yes. during the year. Yes, mm -hmm. that's correct. Exactly. You're not limited. No. And I don't. I don't really know the price of, of but it's in I know the 30 40 dollar range for the whole year mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and it, it is a learning experience for children in, in particular I think absolutely it's a great okay. place for families to go one of the one of the best things in, to do in Greenville in my opinion well now you did have something on outer space mm -hmm. the, that mm -hmm. that's been been here and gone I guess Snoopy I and NASA and, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and space exploration during the Cold War um, we have, we've had some great exhibits. We had a World War II exhibit several years ago. We had a Greenville photograph exhibit, yeah. historic photographs of Greenville. And the permanent exhibits uh, that are there begin in the 1600s, 1700s and then come all the way up to um, past 30 years or so. So you have what you call, Courtney, um, permanent that are always there. And then mm -hmm. there's the constant bringing in of new Exhibits. Yes, changing exhibits. And we have uh, two changing exhibit spaces. One is a 2,000 square foot room where the civil rights exhibit is located right now. Um, and that's downstairs. And then we have a small uh, focus gallery changing exhibit space as well. And that changes, that tends to change more frequently. So there's always a new reason to come back. Yeah. What, uh, what has been the response? To this, because this is fairly new, mm -hmm. yes, this uh, civil rights exhibit right. just it, started. It just premiered January 18th, yeah. and we've had wonderful groups coming in, but not only do they come in, those uh, individuals that are portrayed in this particular exhibit come in and they, you can see it in their face, their expressions, they're reliving it for that moment, but then so proud for the story to be told. And then they leave like a little reflection. We've got an area where they can respond. And they've written such warm, heart, heartfelt uh, remarks about, you know, happy that you're seeing this, proud of you for doing this. You know, I'm going to bring the rest of my family. And then we've had others that have come in to say, I've lived in the area for a while, didn't know about it, so glad you shared. So it's really been an emotional type exhibit as well. So you have had actual visits from people who are portrayed in this yes. exhibit, yes, and they've have. come forward themselves. Mm -hmm. It was very important to us in the research process that we engage people who were activists in this movement, people who were on the committee to desegregate the schools, for instance. And so we conducted an extensive uh, series of oral histories with movement activists, um, people such as um, former Secretary of Education Dick Riley, yes. who served on the committee to integrate the schools just before mm -hmm. 1970. And we have hours of film with these individuals. And at the conclusion of the exhibit, before you leave, there are screens in which you can select a topic and you can hear mm -hmm. Leola Robinson Simpson going to up the steps of First Baptist Church trying to desegregate. You can hear Dick Riley talking about his experiences on the committee. You can hear about people sitting at the lunch counter at Woolworths or Crest. So it's almost like a living it is. example. It was very important is, for us to definitely. get their buy-in and get their input and, and to offer their perspectives in their own words. Because actually it hasn't been that long ago. It's 50 years. See? Yeah. And so that, and, and I do think that many times, especially our children, um, they're not taught history anymore. American history in particular. Many times mm -hmm. our school children, either they don't listen or they're not being presented the material. <laughs> but. Well, and there's no question we need to do a better job um, with education generally and specifically with history. And, and the Upcountry History Museum certainly fills that void because so, so much of uh, getting young people interested in history is finding something that they relate to. And by bringing them to the Upcountry History Museum, this history is, is theirs. It's in their city. It's in their hometown. It's where their family lives. And it's a hook to get them more interested. And uh, you are a professor of history. At Furman. Is there any particular point of history which fascinates you more than any other? Well, certainly the civil rights movement is, yeah. this was my dissertation topic in graduate school, and it's been a passion of mine for a really long so time. So you're the right person to be involved in this, certainly. It's something I've wanted <laughs> to do, and I, I thought 
I thought would be a wonderful experience for this community because there's been a lot of misunderstanding yeah. um, and a lack of communication about different ways that this history has been remembered. And so the, the exhibit provides an opportunity for people to come together and to begin to understand each other and to reflect on our past talk about where we are, where and we build, want to go. Well, build a better future. Build a better future. As the future. Yes. said before you. Exactly. That's what we all should be about. Exactly. Is building a better future for this country this and our world. How can we use this history to move forward yeah. better? And we can learn from history. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. We must yeah. know it. It's the context <laughs> for our lives. <laughs> so if you uh, haven't been, we urge you to go to the Upcountry History Museum and they're open Certainly weekends for families and uh, after school programs and whatever. And if we have a telephone number, and you can call and get the complete story. And it is very affordable and it's a wonderful place to visit. Thank you it's, for your support. Yeah. Listen, thank, thank you. you. I love the history. Man. I love that. Up we look forward history. to seeing you. I know. I don't get there as much as I like. Thank you so much thank you. for coming and thank sharing. Thank you very much. And good luck. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for having us. So you take a peek when you get a chance and take your family to the Upcountry History Museum. Enjoy all of it, and especially this particular offering, which is called Progress Prayer. Progress. Protests. Protest and prayers. Prayers and progress. And we will see you <laughs> next time.